Hello everybody, my name is Stephen McNamara, aka Steve Mac 25 uh, This video we're going to go over a review on The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. It is the first Game Boy Advance game made for from Nintendo. And of course it's not the first handheld game because it comes after other games like Link's Awakening and the Oracle series. So this game, it's a... Uh, Let's see, it, 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 it's the, it introduces the Ford Switch trilogy. It's a different story, and it, it's self contained. It's not part of the Triforce saga. So, uh, it's the first original game, one of the, is the first original game in the Game Boy Advance platformer, and it continues the legacy of the Z uh, Zelda series in a brand new adventure. And it, it does introduce elements that, that feel new to the series, but, um, in, in reality, the Minish Cap is essentially much of the gameplay of the Four Swords remixed into a single-player experience. Uh, aside from that, it is a Zelda adventure done right, and it fits like a glove with a long, within the long line of successful titles in the series across all of Nintendo's gaming platforms. Like like majority of the Zelda series, the Minish Cap established itself as a self-contained adventure that's completely separate from the other stories. And uh, the hero of this game, it's, it's Link, of course, but it's a different hero, who's set on a quest to locate the Pickery, who are a tiny race of tiny, smaller than Smurf-sized beings, after Princess Zelda has been turned to stone by an evil sorcerer named Vadi. And uh, the, the Pickory, who prefer the more politically correct name Minish, they live among the rest of the big Hyruleans, but can only be seen by children who are pure of heart which makes Link conveniently perfect for the job at hand. And early on in the quest, Link befriends an anthropomorphic uh, cat named Ezlo that shrinks Link to the size of a minish, but only a specific portal scattered throughout the land of Hyrule. And the overall game design of the minish cat never strays far from the familiar formula established in the first Legend of Zelda and embellished in the near-perfect Link to the past re-released on the Game Boy Advance two years ago. Two years prior to Diminished Cat. I'm sorry. I think I about that. But, um, the action-oriented gameplay had, had been tailored specifically for the Game Boy Advance's controls and hardware capabilities. And, uh, and it's, uh, the expert hand of producing an original game in the series off it, it offers new elements to the design without straying too far from the formula. And we can see the influence of past flagship Zelda games like uh, uh, A Link to the Past, the Four Swords game, uh, Four Swords Adventures, which those uh, the, 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 the last two games I mentioned, they're part of the Four Swords trilogy. And Minish Cap takes place way before Four Swords and Four Swords trilogy. Um, it's timeline in the uh, it's place in the timeline that occurs after Skyward Sword, like centuries after Skyward Sword, and uh, after the era of chaos, where the Triforce is uh, put in the sacred realm and sealed away by in the Temple of Time uh, with the Master Sword. That's a story that leads to the of Time from Skyward Sword, but uh, that's beside the point. Uh, Minish Cat it takes place after from the backstory called the War of the Bound Chest, where the hero of men was aided by the uh, by the Pickery, or the Minish, and sealing away evil creatures into a chest with the Pickery Blade and the, uh, and the, and the Light Force. And, it, and every hundred years they celebrate the, the, the tournament at a festival where they have a tournament, and the winner of that was Vadi, who because he's the villain and he's a he's an evil sorcerer, but you learn throughout the game that he's from Ezlo that he is a minish that turned on his own uh, apprentice Ezlo, and Ezlo his objective is uh, nothing nothing more than to than to take down body and and, and save the minish race from the clutches of body and as well as the rate of the kingdom of Hyrule. So he aids Link in any way, he, in any shape, uh, way, shape, or form he can. And uh, the main focus of the Minish Cap is the new ability to get small 
barely a couple of pixels tall when the process is complete. Majority of the time it spent in mouse size form happens in the normal camera perspective since players need to find the special mini minish routes laid out in the normal size world. And uh, on occasion the game breaks out of the standard world to zoom into Link's scaled size to make interacting a bit easier. And it's in these familiar, in these close-ups where the game really pushes the flagship artwork. And the familiar tile, tile work of the Zelda 2D world will bust loose into much more embellished background art to more accurately portray Link's scale in the real world. And players will have to, they're going to have to traverse all over gigantic leaves, books, and hidden nooks up in housing blocks. And the flagship artists have designed some great overhead views for these huge worlds for for to, uh, uh, minimize for link as minimized as a minish to explore and the shrink element comes into play a lot during boss battles where the standard for forest creatures will become huge bosses and other enemies require link to literally crawl inside to do some damage as well and uh, another element that's introduced are kinstone pieces where you find them throughout the land of Hyrule, and you can exchange it once you find the broken pieces uh, with the with the correct uh, with the people that have the correct uh, other, uh, the correct pieces of the kingstones, and and they uh, they're, they're like they're like a jigsaw puzzle, and when they're successful, they put together the whole piece. Kingstones will activate something special somewhere on the game's map, and the clever idea. That gives non-player characters more function within the adventure, and open, it opens up a world of supplemental side quests that sometimes will enhance Link's abilities. The majority of the kinstones in the Minish Cap are extras. Less than a dozen are actually required to complete the game, dictated by their golden color. The rest open up important, but definitely secondary items such as heart pieces to increase Link's health, a collection of shells to win prizes, rupees to purchase goods and weapons, and other elements that can definitely strengthen the character during this adventure. The Kinstone idea is certainly beneficial to the game's design, although it is a bit of a drag that some characters have multiple pieces to connect with Link, so players will have a ton of backtracking and guesswork throughout the quest in order to unlock all the extras in the Minish Cat. Uh, in, the, in the boss battles, they, they utilize the, the copy link idea as well in many creative ways. The single player four link mode isn't just cloning ideas from the GameCube Four Swords Adventure. It's actually new ideas inspired by elements from the previous Four Sword games that add a lot more challenge to the Zelda gameplay. Uh, unfortunately, even with the multiple link characters running around on the Game Boy Advance screen, the team they didn't put a multiplayer option into the Minish Cat. Is more of a single game, and it's the first, it's the the first part of the uh, Minish trilogy, the Four Sword trilogy, where the Minish, where the Pickery Blade, after collecting four elements throughout Hyrule, fire, water, wind, and earth, they strengthen the Pickery Blade. Each element, after you collect two of elements, you make you make copies on certain pedestals of of Link and. And you make a copy of himself. When you get three or four, you have an addition, you have additional copies uh, equivalent to the numbers that I uh, conveyed. Like if you get three uh, cop, cop, let's see, up to, uh, I got three elements. You stand on three pedestal blades, and, you, and you're there are three uh, links, one original and two other copies that that are played. But they're they're needed to move on throughout the game. In order to beat the game, but uh, that, that 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 that's a prelude to the Four Swords games, as the as the the blade becomes the Four Sword. So, this game it sta it stands out from the other the other uh, Zelda games because they don't contain Ganon, they don't contain the Triforce. It has own stories. Well, Four Swords Adventures it does contain Ganon, but. Not really the Triforce, it doesn't revive or the Triforce or the Master Sword or other elements from the, Z Z Z Z uh, Triforce saga. But the graphics, they're, they're among the standards created in Four Swords portion of Link to the Past, which was already a night and day difference over the SNES Classic. 
And while most of the character art and animation has been lifted out of that game for the Minish Cap, it is clearly not a total engine recycling. The screen have had they have a huge amount of character sprites fill in the play field, something that would have slowed past 2D, 2D Zelda games to a crawl. Uh, the graphic designers do tend to keep much of the presentation low-key to keep the game's look and feel as close to past games in the series. But even these guys couldn't couldn't uh, resist pulling some off some uh, effects just to strut their stuff. Multi-tire dungeons have multiple scrolling backgrounds. Like for example, in some locations, pull off a cool sun glare effect to let the sunbeams shine through the leaves. There's even a clever, subtle, but effective technique of blurring the background from players high up in the structure looking down at the world below. And, uh, it is, overall, the minute the, the, the Minish Cap, I mean, I, I, I never played it before, but, um, I checked it out on different YouTube channels. It's not my favorite game, but it's, it, it's a game, uh, pretty much worth to check out. Like, uh, what, what, I, what I recommend it as the best Zelda game, uh, absolutely not. But I, I, I think it, it, it's, a, it's a pretty great, it's a, it's a pretty good Zelda, it's a, it's a good Zelda game. Uh, not, it's not awful, not the greatest, but it, it, it's, it's nice. I like it better than the Four Swords and Four Swords Adventures game. And I think it's, uh, it wouldn't hurt to, to, to sit among the best of the, for that game, to sit among the best of the, of the Zelda series. Even though it's not on the top rank, but, uh, the slight re repetitive nature of the Kinstones, the slightly shorter quest, and the uh, lack of the four-player four-sword modes does put this new adventure slightly under the previous Game Boy Advance effort. It is still, it's still still a fantastic offering on the handheld, retaining everything that makes the Zelda titles so great, improving the single-player quest with the ideas the team introduced in the first player, multiplayer Legend of Zelda title. And it does buy well for the future of the property. When a development team they move these ideas into another 2D adventure for the for the Nintendo franchise. Well that's it on that. My name is Steve O'Mac and I'm cutting this video. Thank you so much for watching and join me on the other episodes.